My pleasure to next introduce Matt Lundgren, who is an assistant professor here at Stanford of Pediatric Radiology. Um, he is also the associate director of our new Stanford Center for Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Imaging, um, and is gonna share some of his work in bringing AI to imaging, um, and I'm very excited that he's doing a lot of that in the pediatric setting. So welcome, Matt. Thanks, Nico. Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, a lot of radiologists and pathologists clearly want to use these tools and we get it, um, but we're getting a lot of interest from clinicians, clinicians that don't normally interpret images. And um, here's what they tell us. So they have a patient, um, they're you know, working them up for maybe pneumonia, and then they're waiting. They're waiting for a result from the radiologist because the radiologist's busy, right? They have a lot of things to do, they have a lot of things to prioritize, and they get overwhelmed. There's a lot of deep learning companies and projects that are focusing on making that radiologist more efficient, and that's great. But we've been wondering, could we potentially make the clinician more efficient? And could we give them the power of these AI tools to make diagnoses on their own in the clinic? And so that's the question we've been asking scientifically. Um, we take uh, primary care docs, surgeons, even nurse practitioners, and we randomize them into two groups. One gets AI assistance, one does not. We have them go through imaging studies. We do a washout period. This is kind of a classic con uh, crossover control trial setup. And then, uh, and then we switch the groups. So this way, they kind of provide their own internal control. And we started with orthopedic surgeons. Um, they tend to like to read their own imaging anyway, so we figured why not. Um, they, uh, they, uh, they're very good at NMRIs, um, and so we figured that would be a nice place to start. We, we, gave, uh, we gave them 120 NMRIs, and we had a deep learning model trained on 1,500, which, by the way, we have released publicly, and that you can use to build your own NMRI um, uh, uh, classifier. Um, and we published this last year as well, another project led by Andrew Eng's team. And what we found was that the clinicians were pretty good at baseline. If you compare that to, uh, to human expert performance, they do pretty well. But when they get the AI assistance, they do even better. And they do even better across these categories. In fact, in ACL tear, they reached the level of a subspecialist expert radiologist performance, which was exciting because this could mean potentially less false positives, uh, less people shopping around for healthcare because they're not getting the answer they need. So we do a lot of these other projects, but I just wanted to highlight this one in particular for the purposes of my broader uh, talk here. And this is a really exciting project. We had a contact from pulmonologists and infectious disease doctors from the University of Cape Town. They have a clinic where they treat HIV positive patients and they work them up for possibly having active TB. Um, clearly not something we deal with in Silicon Valley, so we don't have the expertise here to help them. So they gave us lots of data and we said we'd work together to try to create a tool that would make them better at making those diagnoses. So this is called ChexAid. Pardon the name, it's just the best we could do. Uh, but we developed a tool now that can take some of the clinical data about these patients and the pixel data and help the clinician at the point of care make a decision. Do, do I think this person has active TB or not? And we base this, or the model is trained on using ground truth of sputum cultures, which is the gold standard. So if you look at their baseline accuracy, it's okay. You know, it's modest. Um, this is where the experts are. So this is clearly a very difficult task. This is about as good as it gets. Um, and with our AI tool, they actually exceeded the experts in their own center, uh, which was a, a pretty surprising result. This paper is currently under peer review now. We're excited to sort of release this. But um, just to give you a sense of how hard this is, I tried it, and this is where I fell, unfortunately. It's, it's a coin flip. It's really a difficult task. We don't see a lot of these patients here, um, and so this is a great opportunity for these, uh, for these clinicians. One thing you may have noticed was that in the one side, um, this is a modern uh, healthcare system with advanced imaging, and on the other side, we have this sort of plain film, uh, maybe heterogeneous uh, infrastructure. This vast difference is really going to create a problem for deployment, right? How are we going to give uh, these AI tools to assist these clinicians in these completely disparate situations? Um, you might know where I'm going with this. We're going to use the smartphone, right? Okay, so this is, the, this is the thing that's in everyone's hands right now. Some of you may be looking at your smartphone. It's okay. I do it too. Um, but we know that more people have access to smartphones than they do to clean water. And so if we can leverage this to deploy some of these tools, we can potentially get closer to that thing I talked about earlier about addressing some of those disparities. So we developed an app. This is actually not me. Um, this is actually done by Amir Kiani in the Andrew Yang Lab, um, where you can take a picture of either a screen uh, or a film uh, and potentially receive a diagnosis in a clinical trial. And that might look like this. You go and see your doctor, you have a cough, the doctor takes an x-ray, is able to take a picture of that, confirm their suspicion of maybe you have pneumonia, and is able to treat you and send you home. 
Now, if you're at an urgent care clinic and you're a nurse practitioner, this could really uh, enhance care, right? It could potentially provide some big advantages. But if you're in a different part of the world where you're using film or you don't have the same efficiencies, this smartphone platform would still work. Um, and the idea here is that it's scalable and we get to a place where we can, again, do some of the things that we, we set out to do at the beginning. So this is the tagline, radiologic expertise in a smartphone. Clearly has all the packages here. Uh, but I do want to thank the team. This is really just a small snapshot of the people involved in these projects I've just talked about. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be a part of it, and, uh, and we're looking forward to continuing our work. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you.